In this video and in the next couple videos, I'm going to be showing how to deploy the Cisco Mobile and Remote Access, also known as MRA, in a home lab environment. A lot of this would be able to carry over to a production deployment. However, that's not the focus of this video. So there will be certain things that I'll be doing that you do not want to do in a production environment, especially security things like passwords and whatnot. I'm not going to go into a lot of the advanced features. It's going to be simply the mobile and remote access service. Before getting into that setup, I'm first going to test that the login to Jabber works fine internally because there's really no point in testing over MRA if the internal doesn't work. You really should make sure that the internal login and phone services and directory services all work internally because if you try to do it over MRA and it doesn't work internally, then you're going to find yourself troubleshooting things from, from a perspective that might not be the best perspective. You might think that it works internally and, and that it just doesn't work over MRA. So, you know, in order to, to protect yourself from finding yourself in a scenario where you're troubleshooting things inaccurately, go ahead and test internal first. So I'll put in this user's password. The sign in worked and I'll skip this. Let's go ahead and check that the connection status is good. We can see that the soft phone status is good. Desk, to, desk phone status for CTI is only going to show as connected if I'm actually remotely controlling a phone from Jabber, if I'm doing desktop phone control. We can see voicemail is good, presence is good, and directory is good. I'll log out of this and I'll reset Jabber again. Now we'll move on to creating the virtual machine. We'll open our ESXi, then we'll go to create, register VM, deploy a virtual machine from OVF or OVA file, click next. I'm going to give this the name of HQ EXP for Expressway, capital E to make it clear that this is the E and I'm going to give it a one. I won't be doing a clustered environment. I'll just be doing a single expressway E and a single expressway C. Now we have to select the OVA file. Well, I'm going to be doing 8.11.4. That's my only data store, so I'll go with that. I'll accept the license, click next. This needs to go on the internet access VLAN. I'm not going to power it on automatically. The reason I need my Expressway E to go onto the internet access VLAN is because I need to reach it from outside of my home. I need to be able to get onto my cell phone from somebody else's Wi-Fi or even just from my cellular data plan and log into my Jabber client over the MRA and have my Jabber client, have my Jabber on my iPhone connect and register to my CUCM in my home. I'll leave everything else here the same. I'm not going to do the, the configurations in here. I'm just going to click next and finish it. Now we'll create the Expressway C and it's all pretty much the same stuff. HQ EXP C one. We'll get the same OVA because they use the same OVA. The E and the C use the same OVA. It's the licensing that you'll apply later on that determines whether the server is an E or a C. Same data store. I agree. Next. I'll put this in my server VLAN for headquarters. And again, I'm not going to power it on automatically. We'll click finish here. I'll navigate to my Expressway E. I'll click on edit. Now I'm going to put my network adapter two onto the server VLAN, VLAN HQ. I'll also put my network adapter three on the server VLAN HQ. Not that that really matters. The NIC one is going to be my external interface 
you know, reach, which is, is reaching out to the world. My network adapter two will be my internal interface, which will have accessibility to my expressway C. And then the network adapter three is for future use. It has been for ever. And I'm going to crank this up to four CPU. Otherwise I'll get a, an alert saying that the CPU isn't correct. Something along those lines. Now I'll hop over to the expressway C. And the only thing that I'll do there is crank the CPU up like I did on the expressway E. We'll save that. Let's see if we can power on the C. Looks like it's doing what I want it to. We'll power on the E as well. Now I'll launch the console. I'm going to skip this for now. It's asking me for the root password. I'm going to put in a simple password. Then I have to confirm it. Now I have to put in the admin password. At this point, it tells me to press enter to continue the boot and apply the configuration. So I'll do that. And I'm going to hit control alt to get out of this terminal. Then I'm going to jump over to the expressway C so that we can set the passwords there as well. I'm going to set it as the same as the E. I wouldn't do that in a production environment though. Then I'll hit enter to continue. As you can see, it was asking me for the Cisco login because we need to actually log in using that admin account to do an initial wizard through the terminal. So I'll log in here using the admin account. I'm actually logging into the expressway E right now, which is important to note. It asked me if I want to run the install wizard. I'll hit Y for yes. Do you wish to change the system password? I do not. IPv4 is what I want. And we're going to go with 192.168.1.40. That is the subnet mask that I want. The default gateway is not correct, so we'll put 192.168. Dot one dot two five four. Leave that as auto. I do want to run the SSH. Now, this is going to go through and it's going to prompt me for the login again after the restart is complete. If you go in and do that login again using the admin username, you're going to get prompted for the same wizard. If you wanted to actually get into the CLI, you'll have to do root. So I'll show you here actually. And now it's asking me, do you want to run the install wizard? So I'm going to say no. If we logged in with root, you can see that I actually reach the CLI here. We'll do ping 192.168.1.254. We get our replies back. So I'll hit control C on that and I will exit this terminal. Now I'll hop over to the expressway C log in with admin, just like I did on the E and we'll go through the install wizard here. I don't want to change the password. I'll keep it IPv4. This one is actually going to go onto my HQ server VLAN 110 is the third octet for that VLAN. This server is going to be 41. So my expressway E public facing interface will be dot 40 on my home network. The internal interface of the expressway E will also be dot 40, but on my HQ network, the 110. So the C is dot 41. That's the subnet mask I want. We have to change this to 192.168.110.1. .1. 
Keep that as auto. Yes, I want to run SSH. And I just have to wait for the prompt about doing a restart. So I'll say yes there. At this point, once the servers are done rebooting, we'll actually be able to access the web interface of the servers to do some more configurations. Due to this video getting up there a little bit in terms of length, I want, I want to, try to try to keep them around 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes, at most 20 minutes. This one's getting into the range where I want to try to keep my videos for this video series. Therefore, I'm going to end this video here and we'll do the next configuration in the next video.